Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be using Universe Sandbox Square and a little bit of scientific analysis to talk about a very unusual topic. We're going to discuss the Bitcoin and specifically its influence on the world climate. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So by now, by the end of 2017, you've probably heard about Bitcoin, you've heard about the craziness behind it, how much money people have made and how much money people have lost, and you may have even bought some yourself. But have you actually wondered the effects the, this particular concept has on the world climate? Now, this might not make sense yet, but let's just analyze this mathematically and scientifically. We're going to start with the idea of where the actual emissions and uh, climate change might actually come from when it comes to Bitcoin. So when it comes to Bitcoin, there is a concept called mining. Bitcoin mining is something that is very, very consuming of energy and consuming of things and will actually very likely cause quite a lot of concern later on. This is, I guess, what a typical Bitcoin mine looks like. This is probably somewhere in China. And most of them, like 90% of them, the big ones at least, are located in China. Uh, there's actually a really, really cool uh, video slash article from Vice magazine uh, that talks about life inside a secret Chinese Bitcoin mine. And basically they tell you about how they mine and where they mine and uh, what it all means and what it involves. And basically, in short at least, Bitcoin mining involves a huge amount of these machines called ASICs, uh, which essentially break code. And they break code very efficiently, very fast, but they require a tremendous amount of energy. As a matter of fact, there is a list um, you can find online that shows you how much energy each of those ASICs requires. But there's even a better website. There's a website that keeps track of the entire energy consumption of all Bitcoin machines around the world um, by using a statistical analysis. This is actually a website called called Digiconomist. And this website has a tremendous amount of various data. The ones that we are going to be looking at is somewhere under here. I think it's Bitcoin Energy Consumption Index. If you actually click on it, click on it, it will take you to a list of things. And this list is constantly updated. Now, there's a graph that you might be able to see here, especially if I expand this a little bit. Um, it shows you uh, well, it, it shows you the numbers. And here, as you can see from basically in the last month, from November 1st to today, November 23rd, I guess, it has been kind of increasing. When I actually originally started planning this video, it was somewhere around here. Now it's somewhere here. Now, what is this number? It says 29 terawatt hour. This right now is the current estimated annual electricity consumption of the Bitcoin network. And this is only Bitcoin, not other cryptocurrencies. There's a lot of other cryptocurrencies that increase this value even more. And it's increasing every single day. Only a week ago was about uh, 27. Now it's almost 30. It also shows you the annual mining revenues. It shows you a lot of other stuff. It even compares the electricity consumption to, to a country. And in, in this case right now, it's very similar to a country called Oman. And this basically means that the entire country Oman is consuming about the same amount of electricity as the entire Bitcoin network. Um, or I guess there's several Bitcoin networks. But what's more important is that these numbers here. So this here shows you uh, how many households in the US you can power by a single Bitcoin transaction. So you know, if you go online, for example, and because I live in South Korea, I wanted to show you a local example. So here, this is actually from a magazine I read recently. There is this uh, website slash skincare product called Monique that accepts Bitcoin. So if I, if I wanted to buy like the cream, for example, and I wanted to uh, pay for it in Bitcoin, which apparently this company accepts, I essentially would be paying for it, um, not only in my own money, but I would also be paying for it in electricity that it takes to actually initiate this transaction. And in this particular case, the amount of the electricity that is going to take to pay for this amazing product, no matter how amazing it is, uh, would actually be enough to power 10 uh, US households, 10 US houses for one day. That is a lot of energy. Now we can obviously also convert this energy to carbon footprint and find out how much carbon footprint all of this energetic activity leaves on a beautiful planet Earth. And by the way, current electricity consumption of the entire network is about 0.13% 
of the entire world consumption. That's already pretty uh, pretty dramatic number. And it was only 0.8% a few weeks ago when I checked. So it's increasing pretty much every single week. This is soon going to be 1% and then it's going to increase even more. Now, right, so how are we going to calculate the carbon footprint? Well, first of all, we're going to take this number, which is 29.8, let's say 30. Let's say that annual consumption of Bitcoin network is about um, 30 terawatt hour. Um, now, this is a uh, concept of energy and you can actually use various carbon calculators to then try to estimate how much carbon dioxide does this actually produce uh, based on the amount you enter. So here, if we were to enter, uh, let's say 30,000 kilowatt per hour, it would calculate that uh, this basically consumes 30 metric tons. But because the number we're dealing with is 30 terawatt, we actually don't even have enough space to enter this. It has a limit to how many numbers you can enter. Now, where is this number coming from? And this is actually an, a concept called kilogram of carbon dioxide per kilowatt hour. This is actually a number that does change dramatically depending on where your energy came from. So, for example, if this was coming from wood, then it would be about 0.39 kilograms per kilowatt hour. If it's coming from a specific type of coal, it's about 0.37. And this is assuming that it's um, a power plant with 100% efficiency. Most of them are not. The ones in China where a lot of Bitcoin mining um, occurs are at best about 50%, but usually about 30% efficient. So this then becomes closer to number one. So we're going to use that. We're actually going to go with a more conservative number of one kilogram of carbon dioxide per one kilowatt hour. In other words, it's quite a lot of emissions. And this is, of course, assuming that a lot of the uh, Bitcoin mining happens near the coal plants. There are, however, other Bitcoin uh, mines that use hydro energy. They're usually located near um, hydroelectric dams, but they're not as common as the ones that use coal. So just for the sakes of conservative numbers, we're going to go with um, coal. And so here it's going to be between 0.37 and 1, depending on the efficiency of the plant. So how much carbon dioxide will be produced from this amount of energy per year? Well, that's easy. You just literally multiply it by 1, and this is you'll get this in kilograms. So this number is then 30 tera kilograms of CO2. If you want to convert this to something more manageable, something that we can actually enter into Universe Sandbox, uh, we will need to convert this into gigatons of CO2. So in other words, it's billions of tons of CO2. And currently we have um, 30 tera kilograms of CO2. So if we were to divide this by a thousand to turn this into tons, and then divide this by a billion to turn this into gigatons, we would get number 30. So in other words, this is 30 gigatons of CO2 per year. And this is right now, and don't forget, this number is constantly increasing. So let's go to the um, carbon dioxide measurements here and the greenhouse gases, basically. And we we're, we're basically are going to be changing this value. And then looking at the temperature right here. So right now, if you look at it, it's about 15 point, um, I guess it's 16 maximum, and then it goes down to about 15, 14.9. So let's see if this changes a lot, if we actually change this value. Now, by the way, carbon dioxide level have, um, have actually increased uh, since this simulation was made. Uh, the current average carbon dioxide level, and you can also find this from another website known as uh, CO2.Earth, it stands at uh, 403.38 because that way we'll, we'll have a more accurate prediction of our um, temperature. And so here, the temperature will probably increase a little bit, not a lot, but just a little bit. So 16.1 is the highest. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the total CO2 level. We're going, we're going to increase it by about 30 and see by how much PPMV changes. So this is, remember, this is from Bitcoin mining. So 21 plus 30 is 51. And the value will actually go up to 407. That is actually pretty, pretty extreme. The temperature will now increase by just a little bit, maybe just a decimal point. But just the fact that after one year, the Bitcoin uh, mining can release so much carbon dioxide that it will um, increase our PPMV by the value of about four is already pretty alarming. After 10 years, assuming the mining continues and does not increase anymore, this will obviously go up by about 300, making the BPMV 442. 
So imagine the year is 2027. We've been mining Bitcoin, but it kind of hasn't really increased very much. We're just doing it the same way using those same um, coal mines to try to get energy from, from China and from wherever else uh, people are mining Bitcoins. The temperature has now increased quite dramatically. The maximum is at 16.7 degrees. Okay. And if you do this longer and longer, this will go higher and higher. Now, the problem with this is obviously it's, this is a very simple assumption. It's making, we're making an assumption that most of the mines use coal um, energy and those coal mines are not very efficient. And what this kind of suggests is that, well, first of all, we need to stop using those mines. If, you, if you're going to be continuing uh, Bitcoin mining, it needs to be on energy that's a lot, a lot more safe and secure and something that will not make our carbon dioxide levels skyrocket even more. That is one of the biggest problems in, in the modern scientific community right now. And we're basically causing the climate changes to increase even more. And most of it obviously is because people want to get into this whole Bitcoin uh, madness and want to participate in it. Well, they want to make more money from it, but without really thinking about how it affects the climate. And what's interesting is that uh, the way that the Bitcoin algorithm is laid out, um, the last Bitcoin will be mined in about 100 years from now. So I think it's year 2140. And assuming that um, we still release just as much or even more carbon dioxide um, until that time, this would imply that the amount of carbon dioxide in our um, atmosphere is going to jump tremendously high. This is going to be like 6,000 or so. And if this is 6,000 and PPMV becomes 775, look at what happens to our temperature. Look at what happens to our planet Earth. Now, obviously, this is an extreme example, maybe a little bit simplified, but it does give you uh, an idea of what would happen if we actually did not think about the climate changes and, of course, the influence uh, on our atmosphere from all of this very inefficient and also very, very energy consuming activity such as mining, Bitcoin mining, that is. Look, every single year it's increasing. It's already at 21 degrees Celsius. Anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. And do check out those links I mentioned in this video. Uh, they do kind of give you an idea of how the energy consumption of Bitcoin is going, uh, growing out of control and going really, really, really high every single year. Maybe in the next few years, we'll be able to discuss this in a little bit more detail and find a solution to this. But for now, we really need to stop, slow down and think about what we're doing. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And watch our beautiful planet Earth explode as I click the explode button right here. See you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye bye.